So Spring Breakers is actually pretty amazing. Harmony Corinne's Spring Breakers is a polarizing film to say the least. Harmony Corinne's films in general actually are, to be honest. Gummo, Julian Donkey Boy, Mr. Lonely, and Trash Humpers all had really similar reactions. People seem to either really love Spring Breakers or really hate it with very little middle ground. As I said in the intro, I'm part of the former group. I genuinely think it's a fantastic film that gets overlooked a lot of the time and oversimplified when it is actually discussed. So I'm going to attempt to explain in this video what makes Spring Breakers so special to me, and why I think it's actually a cynical criticism of modern pop culture and not just an empty glossy mess like a lot of people seem to label it. Hey, just a quick heads up, I'm definitely going to have to spoil certain parts of the film to explain why I like it and explain the themes that the film has going on. So if you haven't seen it and don't want it spoiled, maybe this isn't the video for you. Maybe watch the film first, then come back and watch it later. Anyway, that's your warning. Back to the video. Before I attempt to explain Spring Breaker's story and themes, I want to first break down the many technical aspects of this film that I find incredibly unique and impressive. First off, all the performances are really solid. James Franco is easily the show stealer here, just being a total fucking nut job for the entire runtime. Man, fucking dad, I'll fuck that shit up. Look at my shit. Look at my shit. I'm a fucking nightmare, motherfucker. I'm the motherfucking death star up in this shit. Dropping fucking planets. I dropped that fucking black planet. I do feel like his over the top performance kind of distracts from how good the rest of the cast was at times, though. I especially love Vanessa Hudgens and Ashley Benson as Brit and Candy, the supposed dangerous two of the group of girls. Selena Gomez is also surprisingly good in her role. I've never been much of a fan of her, but I think she was well cast here as the most innocent one in the group, and she does a more than acceptable job. The next thing I have to mention with this film is the unsettlingly gorgeous Cliff Martinez score. Cliff Martinez has made multiple of my favorite film soundtracks of all time, and this one's no exception, it's definitely high up there. There's something so peaceful and dreamlike about the music in the film, and there are numerous instances of the score directly contradicting whatever's being shown on screen, which only makes those scenes more unsettling and disturbing. The score also repeats itself a lot, but not in a way that gets annoying. I actually didn't even realize it the first time around how many times Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites by Skrillex is sprinkled throughout the soundtrack, but each and every time it's used, they somehow manage to tweak it and use it in a slightly different way. From the loud, obnoxious, in-your-face opening, to the quiet piano keys during quieter scenes, to the big orchestral finale during the shootout. More colors, more love, more understanding. God, it was so nice to get a break from reality for a little while. I know we have to go back to school, but we'll always remember this trip. Something so amazing, magical, something so. There's something so effective and hypnotic about the way that the film reincorporates music that also plays into the film's theme of criticizing the repetitiveness and pointlessness of pop culture. Also, speaking of music, this film contains easily the greatest use of a Britney Spears song I've ever seen in a film when every time plays over a slow-mo montage of these girls becoming hardened criminals. It's hilarious and disturbing at the same time, and it's the perfect song to use because it's so innocent and these girls are rapidly becoming more and more corrupted individuals. The last thing I want to talk about in regards to the film's technical achievements is the absolutely beautiful cinematography by Benoit Dibby. Benoit Dibby has shot multiple films for Gaspar Noé in the past and done a great job on all of his films. Spring Breakers might actually be my favorite work he's done though. Corinne's films have always been kind of ugly to say the least, mind you it's usually on purpose. But I remember being caught completely off guard by how downright gorgeous this film was the first time I saw it. 
I'm doing it no justice with this compressed YouTube video, but please search this movie out in the most high definition format you can find if you're gonna watch it. It's like a trippy candy colored music video throughout its entire runtime. Every scene totally pops off the screen, and there's even a really impressive single take robbery early on in the film that goes on for a solid minute or so without cutting. Speaking of which, that robbery scene plays right into one of the main themes I believe the film is trying to explore. Young people's increasing disconnect from reality based on their obsession with film, video games, and music. Everyone wants to live in a movie or a music video. Compare that scene I just showed to how the three end up explaining how the robbery went down to Faith later in the film. Their story is the polar opposite of what actually went down. Out for all the motherfucking police. And we in the back. And we just open the door and we go, these motherfuckers! Hands on the motherfucking Get air. your motherfucking knees on the motherfucking ground. Shit. Those motherfuckers down, motherfucker, down! Get on your fucking knees, face. Get on your fucking knees. Get your motherfucking knees on the fucking ground. What they do? They fucking got on the ground. <laughs> The actual robbery went off really easily, with no fight, no real excitement, but in their retelling they hype it all up and make it sound like it was this super dangerous, super aggressive thing, like something out of a movie they watched or a video game they played. These girls clearly idolize pop culture to a dangerous extent, and throughout the film become more and more immersed in their fantasy version of Spring Break until they move 100% into that dreamlike fantasy during the climactic shootout scene. World. We saw some beautiful things here. Things we'll never forget. We got to let loose. God, I can't believe how many new friends we made. Friends from all over the place. I mean, everyone was so sweet here. There's no fucking way that two girls with no armor of any sort, just bikinis and handguns, could go take down an entire gang of thugs with little to no effort. But they can, because of this fantasy they've created within their own heads. They have totally disconnected from reality, and they've crossed a bridge of no return. The entire subject is summarized ironically enough by Faith, the most innocent girl in the group, early on in the film when she says, I'm tired of seeing the same things every single day. Everybody's miserable here because everybody sees the same things. They wake up in the same bed, the same houses, same depressing streetlights. They're all so desperate to get out of their boring, aimless lives that they try to immerse themselves in this thing that doesn't really exist. They've only ever seen it in movies and in pop culture. Faith even seems to describe it as being a religious experience. She even calls her grandma to tell her she wants to bring her back to Florida next year. But let's be real. Probably aren't Granny's cup of tea. There are a few points in the film where it seems like they sort of question their fantasy and break out of it back into reality, even if it's just for a few minutes. A perfect example being when they are arrested, and the film's music video aesthetic melts back into something more realistic looking while they're in jail. Throughout the film, Faith seems to be the only one that slowly begins to see that this quest for something extreme is dangerous, and she backs out when she's given an opening, echoing an earlier bit of dialogue. 10, it says, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. How cool is that? She's given a way out. Whether that's given by God or not is up to you as the viewer to decide. Britt and Candy, on the other hand, seem to already be corrupted before they even get to Spring Break, already fantasizing about guns and violence in subtle ways throughout the beginning of the movie. Even when their friend Cody gets shot and has to leave to go home, Britt and Candy refuse to leave their fantasy behind because they are at a point where they don't really care about danger at all. They just want to live in this dream forever. 
They stay until the bloody finale, somehow coming out totally unscathed. Although it's unclear how much of the ending is real, it's kind of left up to the viewer. Their fantasy becoming a reality and them permanently living in this dream world is really hammered home by the final lines of the film. Seems like a dream. You can even think of this final shootout as something out of a video game. Remember this line that was spoken earlier? Just fucking pretend like it's a video game. Just act like you're in a movie or something. We can do this. You can't be scared of shit. They fight their way through all the boss's thugs or grunts and then they get to the final level and kill the boss to win the game and win a prize, in this case being the boss's Lamborghini that they run away with at the end. Another important note regarding the corruption of youth in the film. The film's cast is pretty ideal to hammer home that exact theme. You have multiple ex-Disney stars who are seen as the pinnacle of innocence at the time this film was released, and then you have Spring Breakers cast them as girls that turn into hardened criminals and do some pretty awful stuff to a lot of people. A bit heavy-handed? Maybe. But it's super effective for what the film's trying to do. The other theme that I think the film attempts to explore is a criticism of how repetitive pop culture is now. I mentioned earlier how Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites is used at least three or four times throughout the film, but there's also repeated lines of dialogue from earlier in the film. Spring break forever. <laughs> and repeated sound effects that hint at the end of the film that are used as scene transitions. The film seems quite cynical in its judgement of youth culture now, pretty much calling everyone out for liking things that are so empty and repetitive, and never wanting anything deeper. Ironically enough, that's a really common criticism of Spring Breakers itself. Many reviews from both critics and users call the film out on being empty or pretentious, but I think they're missing the point by just jumping to that harsh of a judgement. To be fair, I do think the film was totally misadvertised, because the original trailers definitely made it look way more exciting than it was, and like it was just going to be a crazy action movie with a bunch of TNA. Break, break, bitches! In reality, the film was much darker than it looked, and also much slower paced and more artsy than I think anyone expected. A lot of people went in expecting an exploitation film, but instead got a liquid narrative drama. I remember the first time I saw this film, I honestly didn't know what to think either. I definitely didn't hate it, but I also definitely didn't really love it that much. I felt like there was something I had to be missing, so I rewatched it. And then I rewatched it again. And then I rewatched it a few more times. The film kind of burrowed its way into my brain and slowly I became more and more obsessed with it over the years. And I've gotten to a point now where I think it's actually pretty brilliant and succeeds at almost everything it tries to do while also being one of the best looking and best scored films of the 2010 so far. There's something so special about the way I feel while watching this film. I think if you look past the obnoxious exterior, there's something really special here as the film deconstructs itself and slowly turns into some sort of beautiful fever dream. I really think everyone should give it a chance and try watching it at least once. Spring Breakers will probably always be a polarizing film. I'm not expecting it to ever mean the same to everyone as it does to me, but I just wanted to explain why I think the film may have more going on than a lot of people give it credit for, and I'd urge everyone watching this to give it a shot, or maybe even go back and watch it again if you've already seen it. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I hope I didn't come off too fanboyish in this video. Spring Breakers is one of my favorite films, but I really hope you enjoyed hearing me try to explain why. I'll leave my social media like Letterboxd and Twitter and all that stuff down below, and I'll catch you guys next time.